So here's a question for you. What kind of Jew are you? Tablet Magazine published an online quiz with this title in 2023. Based on the 2020 Pew Research Study of American Jewry, the quiz sorts participants into four categories, active, affiliated, ambivalent, and alienated. At one end of the spectrum are active Jews, those with Judaism at the center of their lives, while at the other end are alienated Jews, those with little Jewish connection at all. According to the quiz, I am an affiliated Jew. <laughs> and with, I quote, little interest in organized religion <laughs> and a bit of a pessimist about our American Jewish future. Like you, I, I have some questions about this algorithm. But accuracy aside, sorting people into groups of four, or four groups, seems to be common among personality tests. There's the four frames model of leadership, the four tendencies, the four, uh, the four temperaments, and so on. Even the Myers-Briggs test has four pairs of letters that mix and match to make up the 16 personality types. And as it turns out, the rabbis of the Mishnah also enjoyed sorting people into four categories. The rabbis tell us in the Mishnah, there are four types of people. There are four types of temperaments, four types of disciples, four types of charity givers, four types of students, and finally, four types of apprentices. Some psychologists suggest that we love personality tests because we want to understand ourselves and understand our place in the world. It's no wonder, then, that this human desire is at least as old as our Torah. In My Hands is perhaps the most ancient of all personality tests, the Lulav. The description for the Arba Aminim the four species that are collectively known as the lulav, first appears in Leviticus alongside the other commandments for Sukkot. Leviticus 23.40 tells us, you shall take the product of Hadar trees, the etrog, branches of the date tree, the lulav, boughs of the myrtle trees, hadas, and willows of the brook, the arava, and you shall rejoice before Adonai your God seven days. The ancient rabbis were perplexed by these instructions. Particularly puzzling to them was the specific naming of these four different plant species. They concluded that these different plants must be symbols that represent something else. Maybe four aspects of God, for example, or the personalities of the four matriarchs. The most widely accepted explanation that they proposed is that the Arba'a Minim, the four species, represent the four types of people that make up the Jewish people. A Midrash in Vayikra Rabbah outlines these four types. The Etrog has both taste and smell, representing those who both have the wisdom of Torah and commit themselves to putting that Torah into action through good deeds. The lulav from a date palm has taste but no smell, representing those who commit to the study of Torah but do not put it into action. The myrtle or the hadas has smell but no taste, people that are full of good deeds and actions but who make no time for the study of Torah. The willow or the arava has neither taste nor smell, and likewise, has neither Torah nor good deeds. If I were to capture these four types as if they were the results of a personality test, here's how I would summarize them. The etrog is the integrator, the person who can take what they learn and translate it into their behavior. The lulav is the learner, the person who insatiably pursues knowledge and wisdom. The hadas is the doer, 
the person who jumps into action and thrives when they're working towards a goal. The arava is the hesitator, the person who is not sure of themselves and chooses observation over participation. Etrog, lulav, hadas, arava. Which one are you? When I consider this question for myself, I jump straight to what I'm not. I want to be the etrog, the integrator of Torah and action, but deep down I know that I am the lulav, the learner. But there's no hierarchy among these types. They simply are. Just as I might wish I were more prone to action, an integrator might be jealous of the hesitator's capacity for reflection. By comparing ourselves to others and emphasizing where we lack, we squander the strengths that we have to offer. But by understanding ourselves, we can share our strengths and we can reflect on and ask for help in the areas where we need it. Elsewhere in the Torah, the trio of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam provide the perfect example for us. Moses is an arava, a hesitator, reluctant to lead his people and aware that he lacks the skills needed to speak on their behalf. His brother Aaron is an etrog, an integrator, who takes what he learns from Moses and communicates it to Pharaoh and the people of Israel. Their sister Miriam is a hadas, a doer, who joyously leads her people to, in song and dance the very moment that they have crossed the Red Sea. The siblings complement each other's talents, and together they accomplish more than any one of them could have alone. I'm sure that every one of us can provide ex similar examples from our own lives, even if they're on a slightly smaller scale. For instance, my husband is the scheduler of our household, looking ahead at the calendar and making sure that logistical needs and travel plans don't catch us by surprise. Meanwhile, I have appointed myself head of shtick. I'm in charge of pulling out our Hanukkah tea towels and blankets, coordinating our Purim costumes, and making sure that we celebrate our cats' birthdays, very important days in our household. Instead of coveting what comes naturally to the other, we each contribute our strengths, and the whole put together is greater than the sum of its parts. We need different kinds of people in our lives and in our communities. We need the friend who will provide comfort just as much as we need the friend who will challenge us. We need the ushers who wish us a Shabbat Shalom and hand us our Sidorim just as much as we need the people sitting in the congregation and the people joining us online. We all fall into the trap of being too hard on ourselves we're doing too much, we're doing too little. My contributions aren't enough, I don't fit in. I'm an arava when I want to be a hadas, but every single one of us is needed. In just a moment, we will fulfill the mitzvah of shaking the lulav, but the mitzvah is only fulfilled when all four species are bound together as one. The rabbis of the Midrash tell us that just as the four species represent the four kinds of Jews, the binding of the lulav together tells us that every single Jew is necessary to the Jewish people. The etrog, the lulav, the hadas, and the arava, each distinct in its qualities, but when they are bound together, the whole lulav is greater than the sum of its four species. Mo adim l'simcha, may this time be joyous for all of us, and Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>